The Mac Plus is one of the most iconic computers of the 1980s, but it's just so big and unwieldy. So today, we're gonna miniaturize this behemoth, including a fully functional five inch glass CRT. We're building the Mac Minus, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy projects that are completely impractical, but totally adorable, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. If you go to any 3D printing project website and search for Macintosh, you'll find pages upon pages of incredible projects that you can print. And I love these kinds of projects, but they all have one thing in common. They're meant to take an LCD screen, which makes sense. I mean, they're easy to source, easy to work with, and connecting an LCD to something like a Raspberry Pi is pretty straightforward. But I think the Glass CRT is one of the most defining iconic features of the classic Mac. So I wanna build a working miniature Macintosh model, and how cool would it be to build one with a working miniature CRT? Enter the Mac Minus, a case designed to hold a five inch CRT from one of those cheap black and white TVs. Like this no name fella that I found for free. And this TV also has composite input, which means that we can hook an old Raspberry Pi up to it very easily. Now, Bamboo Lab is graciously sponsoring today's video, and they sent me a whole freaking brand new A1 printer combo and two boxes full of filament. So we'll open those up and look inside and figure out what we're gonna use to print this Mac Minus in a bit. But first, let me show you the guts that I think we can use to make a convincing mini Macintosh. All right, I've got a big old box of goodies here. Of course, the centerpiece to our build is an old first gen Raspberry Pi with convenient composite out, which is gonna go into our cheap, oh, it's Amtel, cheap Amtel TV. And to connect everything and make it self-contained, one of these Pico ATX power supplies, and we're gonna use one of these little cables here to switch it on and off. And I think that should be more than enough juice out of this 250 watt supply here to power the TV off of SATA. I'm sure it's safe. So this gives me 12 volts here and conveniently our TV takes 12 volts. All right, I do believe the TV has a loose connection inside. But it does power it. And we will power the Pi itself off of a Molex to five volt USB. And then we can do audio out here. And what operating system are we gonna choose? Well, obviously the alternate universe Mac OS, Risk OS. <laughs> I have a three button USB mouse for reasons that will become apparent shortly. Yeah, this screen isn't too bad, honestly. I mean, it's no Macintosh one bit display, but I mean, it is usable. Okay, let's take a look at what Bamboo sent us and start printing a Mac mini, mini Mac, Mac minus. See, magenta, cyan, oh my god, glow in the dark. Okay, glow in the dark green. That's what we're using. Build plate. Ooh, ah, the printer itself. All right, put this next to the other bamboo printer. Honestly, this was really easy to assemble. Oh my God, just look at this glow in the dark filament. That is a heck of a green, I love it. <laughs> All right, let's get to printing some Mac Minus here. And I really love this bamboo software. It is just so good and so convenient. You just drag the Mac Minus in here. 
All right, I've got it nice and flat here. Let's add some supports. Slice her up. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. Yeah, not to get too sappy about these bamboo printers here, but they are just so incredibly easy to set up. I mean, the automatic calibration is incredible. And yeah, you know, we can monitor with the built-in camera on this thing. It's just awesome. I'm so grateful that Bamboo sent me another printer to use. It's it's just so good. Now, pay no mind to my messy lab room. Yeah, check it out. Here's the printer that we're using right now. The A1 3D printer is only $339. That is, it's honestly incredible. And the combo with the four spool AMS here, $489, incredible. So thank you so much Bamboo for sponsoring this video. And check out the links in my description below for an even better deal than their standard pricing. Okay, I decided to do a quick and dirty test print of the front face here. Figure out any kind of adapters to put this screen in. Of course, always be careful with the CRT because uh, any CRT is just literally a giant capacitor. Okay, uh, yeah, these holes in the back would need to come way up. How freaking cool is that? All right, so after reworking pretty much all of the solder joints on the back here, this does now power on reliably. <clears throat> All right, I printed it out with the glow-in-the-dark filament. How freaking cool is this? And this is pretty neat how the board fits into this 3D printed enclosure because there are actually two slots here, so this kind of stays in place. Yeah, look at that. We are held in place. This is absolutely glorious. Okay, so we do have to take off all these gears here since we're not, you know, worried about changing channels. One small thing I hadn't considered, with these jacks sticking out the back here, <laughs> there's no way this is going to fit over top. Well, you know what they say, when in doubt, just solder directly to the board. So I've bypassed the connectors here and here for video and audio, and I have extended the power connector. All right, and in the interest of keeping this build as cursed as possible, I'm pairing our lime green glow-in-the-dark Mac Mini here with uh, this beautiful 8-bit dough mechanical keyboard, which is in a lovely Commodore 64 style, and is actually what I've been using as my main keyboard on my editing station. Plug in our hodgepodge of cables, which will soon be inside of this enclosure. Let's give this a first boot inside of its case. Oh yeah, screen comes on. And it's booting! <laughs> oh my god, this is so ridiculous and amazing. Alright, check it out. I've got everything mounted in the case, and we are ready to assemble. Got the Raspberry Pi screwed in here on a little bracket. I've got the power supply here. I have the speaker up here in a little mount I made for it, and I put little connectors on the end. So we can connect to the power here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we have a miniature Mac. Look at this. All right, now on the back here, I have created a little bracket that holds the power switch, the power jack, so we can kind of just cram all these wires in here. And then I have a plate that can cover this up, and I have a little hole there. Rich, I was going to put like a USB port there or something. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here yet. The only thing that's not great is all these wires kind of push these two halves apart and 
They're not like snug enough to fit to hold by pressure. So I really don't want to glue it. Maybe I'll just be careful. And here we are in the RISC OS desktop, and I don't know if this is coming across in camera, I tried to mess with the settings, but in person, this screen is pretty good. It's distorted a little bit around the edges. It is, uh, well, <laughs> not as crisp as a real Macintosh screen, but it works and it's readable. Here's where the weirdness of RISC OS comes into play. You actually have to click the middle mouse button to do just about anything. So shut down, yeah, middle mouse button, and then left mouse button, shut down. So net surf. Oh yeah, we're online, look at that. Uh, it's not happy about the keyboard for some reason. <laughs> well, apparently old Raspberry Pis can be finicky about too fancy of a USB keyboard due to something about power requirements, but I found this old, totally trash USB keyboard from when I was learning Russian, and this keyboard works just fine. All right, well, let's see how usable our tiny glowing friend is. If we go to frogfind.com, yeah, that works. Macintosh Plus, wow, this screen is kind of hard to read. <laughs> yeah, it works. We're browsing the internet on our tiny Mac Plus. Oh yeah, drawn some pictures. All right, I've got the software store open. Maybe we can get some games on this thing. I must have configured Risk OS wrong or something because literally none of the games work. They're all complaining about missing audio libraries. So that is the Mac Minus, a tiny, bright green, glow in the dark, retro computing fever dream. And this is the perfect thing to take along to VCF shows and, well, anywhere really, because it's adorable, tiny, compact, and portable. And thank you so much again to Bamboo for not only sponsoring this video, but providing the printer and all of the filament that we used to print this bad boy. I am such a huge fan of Bamboo, and I have been for years, and I'm so excited to be working together with them. Expect more weird 3D printing retro computing goodness in the future. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut King Mods, James Fryman, James Lawry, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.